Okay, so we're going to be graphing first systems of linear equations to where it's two linear equations or two lines on one coordinate plane. And when you do this, there, there's a possibility of three different types of solutions. The majority of the time, you're going to have one solution. And that's when the two lines intersect, and the solution is the point at which they intersect. It's the x and y point, the coordinate point. You can have infinitely many solutions, and that is where the two lines actually end up on the same exact line. The two lines are actually the same line, so it's one right on top of the other one. And then there can be no solutions. No solutions are where the two lines are parallel, so they will never intersect. Okay, so for the first example, I have two equations, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph both of them. So for this first one, I first have to add 3x because I'm trying to solve for y. And I'm putting in slope-intercept form, divide by 2, y is equal to 3 over 2x plus 4. So my m is 3 over 2, my b is positive 4. If I go to graph that, my y-intercept is at 4. Now normally I would rise up and to the right, which would be up there, but to follow this line I'm going to have to rise down 3 and go to the left. I'm going to try to get this graph as perfect as I can. I'm going to put as many points on the graph as I can. So I'm going to keep going. Down 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2. The more points you have, the more perfect the graph is. So for this next one, I have x plus 4y equals negative 12. I'm solving for y, so I'm going to subtract x negative x minus 12 divide by positive 4 and I have y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 3 my y-intercept is negative 3 my slope is negative one-fourth. So I'm going to plot my y-intercept first, rise down one to the right four, rise up one to the left four, and you see right there that they intersect at that point do the best that I can on it. But they're intersecting at this point, and that point is negative 4, negative 2. So that means where they intersect is my solution. My solution is negative 4, negative 2. And it's a coordinate. Write it as a coordinate. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Subtract 3x, negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 6, divide by negative 2, y is equal to positive 3 over 2 because negative divided by negative is a positive, so positive 3 over 2x minus 3. So m is 3 over 2, b is equal to negative 3. I'll go ahead and graph that first.
I'm going to use a darker color. So I have my y-intercept at negative 3, rise up 1, 2, 3, run 2, rise up 1, 2, 3, run 2. Again, put as many points as you can on the line and it's going to be more accurate. So when I go to my next one, 6x minus 4y equals 12, subtract 6x, negative 4y equals negative 6x plus 12, divide by negative 4, and y is equal to positive 3 over 2x minus 3. My m is 3 over 2, my b is negative 3, and what you should be noticing is when I plot my y-intercept, I do my slope, I end up on that same exact line. So the answer here is infinitely many solutions. Okay, so for this one, the first equation is the same as the last one, so I'm not going to solve that again. It's going to come out to y equals positive 3 over 2x minus 3. The second one I do need to solve because it's not the exact same. Just to hurry up the notes is why I'm doing that. I already solved it in the previous one. So in this one, I subtract the 3x. I get two, negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 2. Divide by negative 2. And y is equal to positive 3 over 2x minus 1. So my m here is 3 over 2. My b is negative 1. My m here is 3 over 2. My b is negative 3. So when I graph it, and I'm graphing the blue one first, the same one that we did the last time, negative 3, rise up 3, run 2, up 3, run 2. Again, put as many points as you can on the graph. Then I'm going to draw the other one. My y-intercept is negative 1. My slope is up 1, 2, 3, run 2. Up 1, 2, 3, run 2. Down 1, 2, 3, run 2. And what you see here is that my graphs end up being parallel to each other which means that there are no solutions they are parallel because the slopes were the same when the slopes are the same and they have different y-intercepts they're going to be parallel which is no solutions okay so now I have a system of inequalities and it's going to be the same thing I'm just going to graph them the same way like I did regular inequalities so first I have to put it in slope intercept form subtract 2x I get negative y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 3 and then I'm going to divide by negative 1 and remember when I divide by a negative I need to flip that inequality and this becomes positive 2x now plus 3 so my slope or my m is positive 2 and my y-intercept is 3 and for the other one it's already in slope intercept form so I don't need to do anything I'm just gonna write it down here so they're next to each other and my m is equal to negative 1 half my b is 1 so I'm gonna graph the blue one first and I have 
my y intercept at 3, my slope at positive 2, so I'm going to rise up 2, run to the right one. And again, I still want as many points as I can, so I'm going to go rise down 2 into the left one, down 2 into the left one, down 2 again to the left one. And actually, I can even put one more down 2 into the left one. And to shade this one, well, which way is going to be shaded? If you look back here, it's less than. So it's going to be shaded on this side below it. If you go back and check with the original, you would check 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3, which is true. So that point should be in the shaded region. My other one, I have my yellow one now, y-intercept at 1, my slope is negative 1 half, down 1, over 2, down 1, right 2, from the y-intercept, up 1, left 2, up 1, left 2. So this is my line. And from this one, it's greater than, so I'm going to be shading above that line. Now, the only part that really should be shaded is going to be where they intersect. So I'm going to erase all of this here, and I'm going to erase all of this here without trying to erase the line. And that part where they intersect is really what is supposed to only be shaded. And since blue and yellow make green, we're going to shade that section green where they're overlapping. Okay, so here's three for you to try on your own um, and come to class with these done, I'll give you the answers right away, and then we can uh, answer any questions and start practicing all the fun graphs. All right, here's a joke. Why does a seagull fly over the sea? Because if it flew over the bay, it'd be called a bagel. <laughs>